so there are a lot of things you have to take care since covid is still on and uh, so that that's other thing so let me come to the topic so first thing before i start the class uh, i request any one of you to come up and be the class representative and also we are going to set up an uh, whatsapp group so do you have a whatsapp group from section a uh, anyone can say yes ma'am so do you have so it would be great if you can add my uh, name you can send a link to my email id and then i'll join that group so any notification or anything you need immediately i can do from there instead of emailing you or i can send the link to whatsapp also so that hello. would be convenient and any notification any information hello. that should be shared would be much easier with whatsapp but any information or or any materials so there are certain questions related to honors change so please concern office uh, departmental office or central office because i have no idea regarding this right so try to figure it out soon where you would like to go which honors you are going to take just finalize everything Hello? and make sure that whatever email I ids you have are registered here so you have to a class will be okay Ask so if you have some different okay. id so it will be difficult so go I'm and get paying. your change get the id change from central office so do these procedures as soon as possible huh so i think vidhi answered that you have a whatsapp group right yes ma'am okay hmm. so those who are not in the group so if you can That's share uh, i'm getting some uh ma'am actually the group is at the box Ma'am, actually, the group is at the initial stage, hence uh, we are joining it. Okay, step okay, by. That, that's not a problem. It might take a week to set up, so that is not a problem. Till then, I'm going to share the link at your email IDs. That is not a problem. So I'm trying. I was trying to create a Google Classroom uh, for your class, but Google again, the it cannot take more than hundred students, and the strength is right now one zero six. So. The thing is that once the honors, those students who are trying to change their honors, they will move to respective subjects. So at that moment, we can finalize. I mean, how many students are there in section A or section B? Section B has, I think, sixty-nine students. So we can move some of the students from A to B. So it depends upon all the dean office. So how they are going to tackle all these things. Because if you have online classes, then it is fine. But if not, in the worst case, if the COVID is still, I mean, uh, going on, so in that case, you might have again lockdown. If the third wave is there, so in that case, you need to uh, act, so suppose I want you to upload some materials or anything to Google Classroom. So all may not be able to. Uh, See that because you're not in Google Classroom, so I don't know. The maximum strength is hundred, and your classroom has one zero six students, so that's a problem. So we may wait for a week till then. I'm going to share the link uh, at your Gmail IDs. So keep on uh, checking your IDs regularly. So soon we'll be having a WhatsApp group, so there won't be any problem. So next thing is that uh, I'm going to share the slide. Again, I said today is the introductory class, but uh, since there are so many students, it's difficult to uh, have an introduction session with all of you because I am a little bit more curious about the students, uh, what you would like to do in near future, what are your plans, if you need any guidance or anything, we can discuss sometimes. But again, this is more convenient when everything is offline. So it is very difficult to communicate with each and every student whoever wants to talk to me over phone or email ids or whatsapp this is quite difficult because there are n number of students 
so anyway so introduction is little difficult so i am not uh, going to take introduction from all of you uh, what did he say uh, are you all able to see the chat yes ma'am okay so the thing is that i am really not aware of these hostel problems so just keep them aside do not talk over here uh, related to hostels or any honors change or anything related to that just i am focusing on your class that's all because i really don't know about the hostel procedure so try to contact the appropriate person then you'll be more convenient right so i am going to share uh, i think i have taught you during practical exams uh, complexometric titration so i don't know how many of you have attended some of are from maths group some are from non maths group so i remember some of you have already attended uh, complexometric titrations so this is not the first time uh, we are interacting anyway so i'm going to share uh, the slides with you uh, give me a moment see uh, in the very first class i would like to tell you please do not uh, join the class like throughout the session for example i am teaching from 11 to 12 so i see most of the students i mean some of the students join in time like within 5 to 10 minutes but still uh, there are certain students those who are keep on coming in between like 11:30 11:45 like just 5 minutes before they would like to join the class so this is this is ridiculous this is this just you are disturbing everyone so try to join the class just make your mind if there is some network problem that makes sense but if everything is okay try to join the class in time if you have a mood to join the class there is no compulsion from my side and you know there is no uh, attendance problem when you have online classes but you have to be very much regular in order to grasp knowledge because sometimes if you just listen the class right it is not just that you have online exams you can see the notes and you can write it down i mean this is convenient at the moment but at the later stage this is going to be troublesome for you you have to make note that for the current time it is okay i mean you can see the notes whatever you have materials since it is open book exam you can write anything whatever you have material so that is not a problem with you you don't have to study you don't have to read but these are i mean these are not the things these are going to help not going to help you in near future so try to be honest sincere and obedient in all the classes as much as possible unless there is some other issue hello so try That's to join way. online class see today also the strength is right now Actually, 60 lekin baat kar sakte hain bataiye more than like approximately 40 to 50 students have still not joined today's class hmm. so this happened later also i have seen that students are not interested in uh, taking these online classes uh, but this is not not my loss or so this is your loss i mean this is not a great loss because these are online classes and i am and even you are interested in going through offline classes because that is more interactive right it is more convenient so you i mean that is really good but at that moment we don't have any other option so try to focus whatever you have right so let me share the slides with you so just decide among yourself who is going to be the class representative so that i i can have her or his number right and then we can communicate in case i have any uh, important notice so are you all able to see my screen yes ma'am all right that's good 
So I'm going to share a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so all of you can see the slides? Yes, ma'am. OK, that's good. So let's begin. Uh, so you are BSc fifth semester section A, and I'm going to take this CHP 501 course analytical chemistry. So this paper is probably shared by different faculties. It is not just one is going to teach you. See, when I'm teaching you, when I'm sharing the slides, someone comes in between and I have to let him or her join the class. So that is inconvenient to me. That's why I request all of you in the very beginning, please join the class in time, right? It is my humble request that all of you join the class in time. Please do not try to come in between. And if you do not obey this, I am not going to entertain you in the next time. So, this I was talking to you. So, let me give you my brief introduction. Uh, because you should know about myself also, what uh, my background, my academics. So I am Dr. Shruti Trivedi. I have done my master's from the Department of Chemistry BA2 long time back. So it's my pleasure to be here as an assistant professor. After completing my master's, I cleared GATE and NET exam. If you remember, I think you know about GATE exam. It is a, engineering aptitude exam and uh, national eligibility test. So I cleared that and on the basis of GATE scores and on the basis of interview, I was shortlisted at uh, MTech program in IIT Delhi. So I completed uh, this MTech program from two institutes, one IIT Delhi for two semesters because there are four semesters. This is another master's program. So first two semesters I finished from IIT Delhi, rest two semesters I was shortlisted for DART Fellowship. DART Fellowship is an uh, academic exchange program between India and Germany. So I was there for nine months. Initially I studied like uh, a couple of months, like one or two months. We had German course, so we have to learn a German language. And then when it was done, we did some project work. So Two semesters I spent in IIT Delhi and then rest two sem semesters in Germany when I was doing MTech. So that was a great time and it was a good exposure to abroad universities first time in my life. So that was fun as well as, uh, I mean, that was very interesting time, but very good time for me. And then, but I decided to come back to do PhD from IIT Delhi because I had a very good supervisor. Uh, I thought to work with him, although most of my students joined uh, there itself in Germany for doing PhD, they decided to continue their studies in Germany or Europe or some other uh, nearby countries. So I, I should have also done that, but that is okay. So you should not regret what you have done, right? So, but I always encourage all of you to do PhD abroad and postdoc abroad. So, so basically, uh, I did PhD uh, from IIT Delhi, and then I did some project work from the same institute under the same supervisor, and I was uh, keep on applying for various faculty positions. See, someone is still here. Uh, so every time I have to go out of this box and come back again. Sometimes I used to write. In the initial, I have something written in the slide, but later I'm going to use tablet, pen, and I'm going to write uh, on the screen so that you can see. So what I was saying that after completing PhD, I started applying for various job positions, but it was very difficult to get any job. I mean, good position or faculty position after just completion of PhD. It is not at all possible that you are going to get some reputed institute or universities after just completion of PhD. Although PhD process is like five year process, 
So initially, I switched to Delhi University's uh, colleges to teach uh, honor students, BSc honor students. There was no masters uh, in the colleges. So, but I taught there for like two semesters uh, in Matrai College, if you heard this name, that's a girls college and then the AMG college. So I taught there for like two semesters. And then I was keep on applying uh, for various faculty positions, but everything was useless. Unless you have a good postdoc position along with good publications, you're not sufficient or you're not fit for any faculty position. So if you are aiming for some academic positions, you must focus on PhD as well as postdoc from abroad. And you should, along with that, you should have very good credentials in the sense that you should have some awards, honors, you should do well in your uh, masters or bachelors as much as possible. You should have so much of awards. I mean, this is not compulsion, you should have awards. But when you go to PhD, you, you start doing your PhD or postdoc, you should have good publications. Uh, so I don't want to talk in detail about publications here. What does that mean? I mean, in short, I can say that you, you do some project, you write the output in the form of paper that might take six months to a year to publish one single paper, that to an international journal of good impact factor, right? So unless you have those, everything, all things together, it is very difficult to get good positions in top most institutes like IC Bangalore. If you want to really get good positions, uh, faculty positions, IC Bangalore, ICERs, ICERs, they're several ICERs, you know, and then IITs. After this, you have IITs. So now there are so many IITs, but seven IITs are like more old one. And these are like more established. And then you have NITs. So below that, you have universities, right? So universities are also very good. It depends. For example, Hyderabad University is very good. YouTube is good. So there are different universities which are very known. So in order to get good position, so your academic performance, your credentials should be accordingly. So you have to make that. You have still time. You are in BSc. So you can do anything you want. So you, so once I taught in Delhi University Colleges, then I applied for this postdoc position because I realized that it is very difficult to get job just after doing PhD and teaching in like in uh, Indian universities, that was not at all sufficient. So I applied because uh, from my seniors, what I have learned that if you keep on writing to some professors abroad, that you need some uh, postdoctoral position to pursue your research, and you are sending your CV and biodata and everything, and everything matches to their lab. Everything is. Excellent. Still, they say, oh, sorry, we don't have funds. So what I learned that it is very difficult to good, get good postdoc positions in basic sciences specifically, unless they have funds. So it is very difficult. So what I learned that it is not the good, uh, excuse me. So for today, it is OK. Please don't join the class in between. So what did I say? I thought of applying the fellowship, like I got the DART fellowship before. Uh, then I applied for postdoctoral fellowship, State University at New York. I got full right Nehru postdoctoral fellowship. So this fellowship uh, is meant for performing your postdoctoral research uh, work for a period of two years in USA. So it depends upon what university you are going to choose. So you have to give three options or out of that, they are going to give you one. So, so I applied for this fellowship and the total number of uh, seats for this fellowship is just six, 17 or 18 all over India. And that includes all kinds of subjects. It is not just chemistry. So out of 17 uh, positions or uh, seats, you have like, I think, five or six seats for science. So it's very difficult to get postdoc positions also through fellowship. There are different postdoc positions, uh, so fellowships. One is this 
from USA full bright Nehru postdoctoral fellowship the other is dart fellowship this is also meant for uh, postdoctoral studies the other is uh, Marie Curie fellowship from Germany and then you have Humboldt fellowship that is also from Germany Europe side so there are there is uh, JSPS fellowship from Japan. These are all very prestigious fellowship. So if you have if you have good profile at PhD, right? If you have good publications during PhD, you did uh, really well during your PhD. You are able to get good postdoc positions. Uh, before, I mean, before uh, without postdoc and good PhD, you are not able to, I mean, stand out from other students or candidates. You have to be unique. For that, you have to be something different and you have to make that i don't have to make that or the other or your parents don't have to do that you have to do that so i was there for like two years uh, and i mean it was great time over there i studied i enjoyed i mean i visited several other places in usa uh, i mean since i was very close to new york so i visited like five to six times uh, new york city so we had fun also, uh, I mean, we had good food, we had different cultural exchange things. I mean, there were so many things to do when you go abroad. I mean, and when I was doing the art fellowship, so this uh, Germany is very close to France and Italy. So I got the opportunity to explore France as well as Italy long time back. So you have a broad exposure. So your academics, your credentials will take you out and you can learn a lot how these uh, abroad people or abroad labs are working. So you have a lot of idea when you go outside. If you just sit here in one place in India, you're not going to get achieved anything, right? So after doing postdoc positions, then again, uh, I was here, uh, not here in IIT Delhi. I came back and I was keep on writing uh, research papers, some review papers so that I'll be in touch with, uh, because you should not sit at home. And then I was keep on applying. I applied here in BHU third time. So third time I got the call. And finally I got selected here as assistant professor in January 2020. So I'm in uh, specifically analytical chemistry department. So I'm going to teach you this semester also and also the sixth semester. So we are going to be together for just one year. I mean, so if you have any queries, uh, if it is online, then I think it is more convenient to you. Uh, to me as well as you. So this was all about my academics in very short. And these are some of my achievements. Uh, let me summarize them. So I got this uh, Fulbright Nehru Postdoctoral Fellowship. This is the greatest reason why I am here, right? So this is what I'm saying, what I have realized throughout the time. After a long struggle, I got this position. So this I did... Uh, from buffalo and this is a place where you have niagara fall this is uh nah, this buffalo place is at the border of usa and canada so i don't know you have heard about this niagara fall or not this is a very very big fall you can see in the google you can see the images that is really amazing that was like 30 minutes distance from my place so i really told you i mean we had a lot of fun we did a lot of work also. We had different kind of foods. So you, you can change your life extremely. So the other award I got is Indian Oil Award uh, in uh, conjunction with IIT Delhi for the best PhD thesis award in my department. And also I got uh, Outstanding Research Scholar Award. This uh, award is given to only two students from the department for publishing good uh, high impact factors. And then when I was doing MTech, I got I got highest CGPA, and that's that's why I got a DART fellowship. Only two that's students amazing. from the class, uh, from the one department, are selected to pursue their uh, master's program from Europe. Oh, and then okay. these are usual. Everybody gets this JRF fellowship in chemical sciences. Again, uh, in the next I got this DART fellowship. I qualified gate also. I got uh, some best poster award ACS is American Chemical Society. So chemistry is basically uh, when you're writing paper, ACS is a very good journal, American Chemical Society, and then followed by RSC, Royal Society of Chemistry. So basically you're going to uh, 
publish your papers in these journals very frequently. So you'll be learning these things in later stages. And then uh, I publish like 21 international papers in reputed journals and four right now it's five. So this is like old data. So some number has been increased. So these are my uh, achievements. So you can have more achievements than this and you can be in I, like top most institutes of India like IITs or ICERs or IC Bangalore. So it's up to you. So you have to shape your career. It's up to you. So next, uh, that's all from my side. So I don't have enough time uh, to have an introduction from all of you. I would have done it when we were having offline classes. So we'll see if it is possible. When you come here for classes, we'll do that. So next is, let's come to the point. Let's go to the course structure, what uh, I'm going to teach you. Here you have four chapters, statistical realization, precipitation, analytical reagents, and recent trends for clinical analysis. So the third chapter, which is in red, this part I'm going to teach you. This is, I mean, this is not a very big uh, uh, topic. Uh, but it is going to cover almost all the important analytical reagents. For example, uh, when I was teaching practical classes, we taught about, uh, we uh, learned about EDTA. EDTA is a very famous uh, analytical reagent known as ligand or complexing agent, ethylene diamine tetraacetate. And then we are going to learn about their theoretical and practical aspects and the use of these ligands or reagents. Then you have serate, that is cerium-4, which is also an oxidizing agent. Iodate, bromate, these are all oxidizing agents. Chloramine T, what is the role of this? How, where you can use uh, these kinds of reagents? Then you have Carl Fischer titration. Uh, Carl Fischer reagent, this Carl Fischer is uh, very famous to determine the water content in a sample. And you have malaprate reagent. So basically, I am going to teach you these analytical reagents, rest parts. Uh, statistical evaluation precipitation, maybe it is uh, going to be taken by uh, Lee Ganeshan, sir. Uh, and I don't remember who is going to take some other parts. You can see the timetable. Do you have the timetable? No, ma'am. It would be great if you can send it. Okay. Uh, just a moment. I can share you. I'll share with you. Uh, just a moment. You can take a quick uh, screenshot if you wish. So I'm going to open uh, the timetable uh, for citing downloading. Just for your class, I'm going to do that. So unfortunately, uh, today I forgot my uh, laptop charger. So the battery is, uh, I mean, 32 percent remaining. So let me see how far I can go uh, for today's class because I have a desktop too, but uh, it doesn't have a cam. So since this is my first online class for this semester, so I was not that much prepared. I just forgot my charger. So I'm going to share the timetable. You, you can just take the screenshot. This is for BSc first semester. Uh, basic course semester. Yes, it is your section A, right? So just have a look. So here we are right now. If you want, you can take a picture. So please let me know when you are done. Ma'am, done. All right. So I think that this would be helpful for you uh, until you get the actual technical because we have been provided this 
and this was effective from 23rd of August. So I think you have more classes uh, before, right? All right. So back to this. So basically, I, we are going to cover these analytical regions. So I have been allotted just one uh, theory classes. The other uh, faculty members. So CHP 501 is taken by M.K. Bharti sir and P. Ganeshan sir. So three of us are going to teach you this course. And you should uh, make note of that. Uh, you are going to get assignments in between by three. All of, uh, I mean, we all three are going to give you three different assignments. So this carries 10 marks each. 10 plus 10 plus 10 equals 30. And 70 is for theory. So you have... Basically, we are going to cover all these topics uh, for assignment purpose. And whenever you, uh, I mean, there are certain students, I mean, several students, after getting their marks, theory marks or assignment marks, they specifically talk to one professor, just one, why I got so less marks. So never think that only one professor or one faculty member is responsible for those marks because these marks are always cumulative you cannot say that i got this much less marks and you discussed this just one professor so this is really ridiculous and this is uh, depressing because student feels that i have given or that person has given that that much marks since these marks are cumulative, so try to understand if there is some very, I mean, good amount of discrepancy, then you can talk, then you can raise the issue if there is something really wrong. But if you are lying, if marks are lying, right, uh, like in average or above average, then it's okay. So don't go for like one or two marks, uh, you have to raise one marks or two marks. Marks have no meaning, right? At that moment, you think that I mean, you need more marks. BSc me marks chahiye, MSc me marks chahiye, tab kome achhi jagar job milte. That is true, but this is not the only way you are going to get good job or good positions. There are different other ways. So don't die too much for marks. Don't have to worry for too much. Try to give input, and then you will be satisfied itself. Okay? Marks ke liye bahut parishan hone ki zarurat nahi. That too in online case. Online में तो सब देख के लिख रहे हैं किसको क्या मार्क्स दे सब तो सेम एज इट इज कॉपी पेस्ट कर रहे हैं सो इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू डिस्क्रिमिनेट एंड आई एम थिंकिंग टू हैव सम सरप्राइज टेस्ट और समथिंग सो दैट आई कैन इवेल्यूएट यू दिस इज नॉट द वे टू गिव यू असाइनमेंट एंड जस्ट यू सी फ्रॉम सम वेयर एंड कीप ऑन राइटिंग सो दैट डज नॉट मेक एनी सेंस यू नॉट डिस्क्रिमिनेट स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम ईच अदर इन दिस वे इवन इन थियोरी आल्सो if you are doing online OBE exam, then also it does not make any sense. You should have some viva or anything else. Uh, I mean, that is more appropriate to uh, evaluate or to assess you, right? So next thing is that, uh, so these Excuse are the... Me, yes? Ma'am, this time we, we will be having offline examination or online. What? Uh, can you repeat? Ma'am, this... But this time we will be having offline examination only. Organic. Can this, can this. Can you write, write your, I mean, the offline examination. Anam, he is asking that we will, will we have offline examination or online examination in fifth semester? Okay, you never know. Even I never know. Yes, ma'am. It depends upon the situation, right? So what I believe that. Uh, since uh, this COVID issue is still on at, I mean, it is uh, over several places still. So I would believe that it is going to be online, not offline. But you have to be well prepared for offline also. Uh, try to prepare your uh, studies. Like you have, you have to present your exams to offline or not online. Right? So don't be relaxed and see you are going to look at the notes and you are going to write it down. So there are several issues. It is very difficult to discriminate students. So next is Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, Kumar Anurag. Yes, ma'am. We want to suggest that Anukul Oja as our class representative, ma'am. I didn't understand. Do you want to suggest Ankur Oja 
and our class representative man anukul ojha is going to be yes, so sir. thanks a lot our anukul class. and kumar anurag so you decided finally so anukul you and ma'am one more thing ma'am yes ma'am please let me anukul ojha to create the new whatsapp group and share us the link we are not aware of existence of any um, you are not aware of ma'am. existence of any whatsapp group ma'am of chemistry okay so she is going to share uh, What's the name of that girl? Did he or? Yes. So you you all manage. That's not a problem. Um, sorry, it oh. is shared in the in this classroom chat only. Yes, yes. But uh, okay. classroom okay, in this classroom, uh, all students are not here. But they yes, can share among will, themselves. Will That's not a problem. Okay, ma'am. We will join it. And and I'll go there. I'll go there. Unless the group is created and everybody is in the group, I'm going to share the link at your email ID. So don't worry about that. And I may share the materials or anything at your email ID. If the group is not created or classroom is not, uh, I mean, let's wait for a week or two so that honors students finalize their subject. So let's wait till then. I'm going to share the link. I'm going to share the link just five or ten minutes before the class. So. Don't expect I'm going to share like a day before or an hour before. Maybe five minutes before or ten minutes before. So it depends. So this is what I'm going to teach you. We are going to talk about theoretical and practical aspects of the use of following reagents in chemical analysis. So we'll talk about this EDTA is a very famous uh, complexing agent. I think uh, I have taught you this. This also helps in determination of water hardness. and we have certain oxidizing agents their role as oxidizing agents uh, in inorganic and organic chemistry so we'll discuss all these things uh, one by one but edta is like in more detail so we'll do that and then uh, i think that's all uh, so i have something to teach you but uh, i think i'll start from uh, next class so we have general talk so do you have any questions so i don't know uh so almost all the students are here so i am happy somebody didn't left the class in between that was not boring at all isn't it so yes ma'am any ma questions yes ma'am ma'am i wanted to suggest something ma'am can you please uh, share the links and the materials uh, through whatsapp group also because some of the email ids have been changed i didn't receive any notification regarding this class So I got so it from my brother's email ID. That's so why. Those uh, those email IDs have been changed. You should go to central office, or you should write a letter or something. Try to get it changed, and then he send me the list. But it's very hectic the procedure in that central office. That's why it not yet have been done. You do one thing. Uh, you actually uh, the rule is that. the link will be sent to only registered email ids right yes ma'am so i don't know ma'am or if it is allowed ma'am or we not. can send the sorry ma'am but or, or we can send the links to class representative and he will send it on the whatsapp group he is quite an active guy yes ma'am Uh, so we will see. Uh, uh, I mean, how we can improve or how we can. Uh, if I am going to share in the share among yourself, you can talk to your colleagues or friends, and you can get the link from them. That's not a problem. Yes, ma'am. That's not an issue. We will manage. Yes, and if still you think uh, you have some students, those uh, email IDs have been changed. Send me the list to my at my email ID, so I'll see, right? So okay, ma'am. First thing is that the number of students in this class have not been finalized so far. It will take a week or two. So let's wait for that, and then everybody would be there in the Google Classroom, so I can share the link even in Google Classroom also. That's not a problem. So try to change your just whatever email ID you have. You have changed. Go to, go and change your email ID and register that ID and just inform to the office or the concerned authority. 
All right. That's all for today's class. Anything else you would like to say? No. All right. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Not tomorrow. See you next Wednesday. At the same time, I'll share the link five or ten minutes before the class. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.